the 14-year-old's original choreographer of Renegade gets the spotlight. Tom Holland stars in a convincing, deepfake movie scene. And why don't school buses have seatbelts? All that and more coming up on Recap. Hey, it's Maya. Get ready for buzzed about news I think you can use. Renegade is one of the most popular dances on TikTok. And last week, the New York Times tracked down the 14-year-old who choreographed it. Jalea Harmon lives in Atlanta and dances in a lot of different styles. Last year, she called up her friend and they laid down moves to Lottery by K-Cam. Then she posted it, first to Funimate, then to IG. And one month later, after a few changes, this guy did the dance on TikTok. That's when it blew up. But Jalea never got the credit. That is until now. After the New York Times article, K-Camp tweeted her a thank you for helping make Lottery the biggest song in the world. Then, Charlie D'Amelio, the TikToker that got this dance challenge out to the masses, well, she posted a video with Jalea, crediting her for the original choreography. Then, she was invited to the NBA All-Star Game, and she now has more than a million followers on TikTok. But most importantly, we all now know who to credit on our Renegade videos. Jalea! Wait, are Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. reuniting in a remake of Back to the Future? No, no they aren't. But man, this viral video almost had us believing. Canadian YouTuber Easy Rider X47 makes deepfakes for fun, and his latest video has people doing a double take. He put Tom Holland's face where Michael J. Fox used to be and put Robert Downey Jr.'s face where Christopher Lloyd's was. And weirdly, it works? Precisely. Whoa, this is heavy. The video has racked up more than 5 million views. Tom Holland was even shown the clip and asked if he'd be interested in a remake. I would not be interested because that is a perfect movie. Now, experts have warned against deepfake technology because it uses artificial intelligence to show people saying and doing things that they did not say or do. It can easily fool people into believing something that isn't real. So be careful. But also, is this the future of remaking movies? Will producers just mash up things like this and call it done? <laughs> this is definitely how I get on The Mandalorian. Big news if you ride a school bus. Transport Canada is testing out seat belts. Buckle up for safety, buckle up. Buckle up for safety, always buckle up. Um, we've come a long way since then. Thankfully, three-point seat belts are now the norm and one of the most significant inventions of our lifetime. You know, at one time it was thought seatbelts in buses could do more harm than good in an accident. But last year, the government put a task force together to look closer at school bus safety, and they agreed that if installed properly and worn properly, three-point seatbelts can add an important layer of protection. So some buses in Ontario and BC are going to start testing. And if things go well, school bus seatbelts could roll out widely across Canada. Buckle up for safety, buckle up. <laughs> buckle up, everyone. Ariel's back. Hi. You're a huge soccer fan, right? Well, I actually call it football, but you can call it soccer. Can we just get along? As I was saying, you're a huge sports fan. Yeah, there's a good news story and a bad news story, and I'm ready to get into it. Where should we start? Let's start with the not so good story. The Astros cheating scandal has been dominating headlines for months now, and the MLB commissioner is in hot water. Wait, can you go back and explain? It's a long story, but here's a short version. The Astros won the World Series in 2017. The Houston Astros are world champions for the first time in franchise history. But last year, it was revealed that they were stealing pitcher signs from the opposing team, basically giving them a chance to hit more balls. That sounds bad. Oh yeah, it is. They had an illegal video feed piped into the dugout and would do things like bang in a garbage can, tell their hitter what kind of pitch was coming their way. But they were punished last month, right? Yes, but here's where it gets tricky. The MLB commissioner is Rob Manfred, and he suspended the team's general manager and manager. Then they were fired by the Astros. The MLB also stripped the team of four draft picks and handed them a $5 million fine. But none of the players were suspended or fined because they participated in the investigation. Really? Yeah. Manfred thinks public shame is punishment enough, but here's where it gets really tricky. 
there are no plans to strip the Astros of the 2017 World Series title. And that's the one decision receiving the most criticism from the baseball community. This game is rigged, man. Huh, and there's more news about this this week? Manfred did a 45 minute interview with ESPN and in that interview he defended well, the Astros that, punishment. Um, he also called the World Series trophy just a piece of metal and said that taking away the title from Houston seems like a futile act. His comments have not gone over too well with baseball fans. Oh boy, I think we need to move into the good news category now. Good idea. How about this? Raptors superfan Navbatia was put into the Basketball Hall of Fame. I'm in shock. I am really in shock. Last week, he became one of the first honorees of the new Superfan Gallery. He's attended almost every home game and is basically a celebrity. I love him. Didn't he also get a championship ring from the team? Yes, the first person in NBA history with that honor. And the team itself? Well, the Raptors are surprising a lot of critics this season. Yeah, no one knew if they'd bounce back after losing Kawhi. I know, but they've already had a 15-game winning streak, and despite a ton of injuries, they seem to be playing smart and with pride. The Toronto Raptors hang on! It's exciting to watch, and I hope they keep it up. Me too. Me three. Don't you start. <laughs>